Now, please join me in welcoming our box show coordinator, Jenny Lynn Hall. Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here. Um, this is my second year as box show coordinator. Um, last year, as you can imagine, it was kind of a wild, wild ride as we were navigating all the COVID regulations and trying to do more things on video just to keep people engaged with the show. And, um, and we put together this series just because a lot of people were asking for pointers, especially newer box artists, about um, how to make a better box, how to approach the box making process. So we invited some more experienced box artists uh, to explain their processes and show some of their, their, um, their earlier boxes and as a, for, a forum for questions. Um, I just want to thank you to the artists participating today, Leslie Lakes and Barry Trickerman. Um, Ian Cameron and LaRonda needed to cancel at the last minute, but they'll be with us in spirit. Vakisa is going to be our moderator. Um, she is a longtime member of Gallery Route One. She's been making boxes since the beginning of the show. And I love working with her on the box, so she, she just makes everything so much more fun. <laughs> so welcome, Vakisa, and um, enjoy the program. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny Lynn, for everything that you do, honestly. And I really wanted to just talk a little bit about Ian Cameron Hawkins because, um, well, I had a conversation with him and apparently he thinks that work trumps the box show, but he said some things on the phone that really resonated and I wanted to share them with you. Every year they rent a car and drive up from San Francisco to pick up the box and deliver their unique box. They also rent a car for that. It's more than just a benefit is what I heard him say. For some people, the box show is a yearly highlight. And as Ian says, for the gallery, it's our biggest fundraiser. And it's so great to have all of you artists participating, donating your boxes and joining us today. I really want to thank you. And um, this is Ian's box from last year. As you see, he's in, really into logos and he's really into making a big splash and everybody just loves his boxes and his energy. Um, so I'm excited to see what's going to be coming next for me. Show that to zero. <laughs> Pretty great. So I'm thrilled now to say that Barry Chuckerman and Susan Chuckerman have decided to join us. Barry graduated from the University of Arizona in Tucson with a degree in graphic design and packaging. And he moved to LA to change the art world. He spent a week as a graphic designer and he hated it. He then became a picture framer. That was good, but then he joined Martin Lawrence Galleries in 1987 to sell Warhol, Herring, Chagall, Picasso, Miro, and Muniz, and he's still there. He knows a lot about art, and he knows a lot about the box show and how to make a great box. He's been making dioramas since forever and always liked small stuff, buying it, making it, selling it. It may have started with the Thorn Rooms at the Art Institute of Chicago, but I have to tell you, his email is, I make small stuff. Now that's dedication, and I don't know if he's had it tattooed on himself, but he'll tell us all about it and all the things he's learned about the box show. So Barry, just tell us what you know, how you felt when you received your first box or your first impression of the box this year. Excited. We've been excited the whole time. Um, this show for both of us, I think, has been, um, it's just a great venue. It's a great outlet. It's, it's so diverse. Anytime you can put artists with international reputations work in the same room with the, the kids, the high school kids, the grade school kids, I like that and always have. Um, also, the idea of that show being limited to 150, uh, I think it's good. It gets too big, it gets out of hand really fast. That Criteria being used the box, I think, is one of the greatest things ever. And I know there are times where um, we all probably go through this. I get that box, and I've been looking at ideas all year long. In this case, we all had more time to think about it. and. Uh, once the box arrives, it's like, now what? Right, right. Now what? And uh, I don't know, what should we be talking about? 
Would well, you like I'm interested in what motivation you got to get started. And uh, you told us that you've been having some ideas, but how do you get from that to the finished box? <laughs> I think um, for me, I have a tendency to work in reverse. Uh, when I look at, and Susan will attest to this, when I look at um, some of the most successful people in these shows, uh, if I look at LaRonda's work, she sits down and she comes up with an idea and she will pull it together with some drawings or whatever until she knows what she wants to do. And then she's got a vision and she's going after it. I think uh, Todd Fellows does that too. There's a decision made, I'm going to do this. And I don't know that I ever got to that. I tend to start more with an object or a little thought or a little idea um, that watching paint dry piece was... Um, It started because I found a really cool little nifty cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's what that's what started that that piece. And then I said, okay, um, let's take uh, things painters use for eight hundred, Alex, and that's what we started with. So, would you, would you like to share the video? Was a cooler. You can share the video. Was it cooler? It was. Yeah. You can narrate it if you want. Well, <laughs> what's, what's to narrate? This was the beginning of a spray can. And I, I guess that I would insert, from my perspective, it is uh, really quite serendipitous to watch Barry go from concept and watch the whole metamorphosis of his image come to fruition that I I, I just, I, I feel, um, I don't know, I think maybe magic is too trite of a word, but it is, it is I've, I have just never seen anything like it. Um, I've known Barry since 1981 and his work, I mean, I might be biased, just keeps evolving and uh, more detail and more detail that oftentimes my experience with the viewer is a lot of uh, dialogue about, oh my gosh, did you see this? Oh wait, look at this, look how he did this. And I mean, that attention to detail for me is very admirable and I think translates nicely for the box, box show, so. That is really right. What a great spouse. Didn't you work on some of the boxes together? Don't you do? Do you do work or do you have one way or another behind the scenes on every box and oh, good. I laugh because I have a tendency towards garbage garbage things in distress are much easier than things that are perfect as far as making them um Susan always says it needs hope it needs hope Aww, it's too good. dark it needs hope so we in every one of those hope. pieces I bought a hundred little tulips, so I can put some tulips in a corner somewhere and there's hope. But the, the, the essence, when you talk about processes is, is, I tend to start with an object, I guess, whether that's a, you know, th this year may end up being this as a start. It may what, not, what I don't know. <laughs> oh, a little um, mask thing. I have a lot of, you know, it started with things people were hoarding. And I have a lot of them, whether there's a piece there or not yet, I don't know, but <laughs> I, I have a story unfolding here somewhere along the way, um, whether that works or not, we'll see. But let me understand that you actually just see some things and then it, that becomes your impetus to, to start. And it's a very different method than other people. So I'm glad you shared that. Will you share your glue story? Because I think glue is something that a lot of people have trouble with. And you have it beat for sure. I don't know that I have it beat. Uh, Travis at Tap Plastics has given me every bit of adhesive advice anyone could ever want. And he taught me about some of the differences where all you're gonna to have to do is experiment. You know, if you're trying to use crazy glue, there's certain things that don't like it. It works by moisture. 
It doesn't like metal. It doesn't like glass. Um, it's going to fog polystyrene. Things like that. You learn them the hard way. You say, why did this turn all milky white? So try another glue. I don't know. Well, why shouldn't we just ask you instead of trying it all out? You could, but I still have more questions than answers. Well, I know that I think uh, a hot glue gun, what do you think of that? I don't own one. That's what I think. I've learned that. I don't I, own one. One, I mean, one. one thing about a hot glue gun is that things can pop off. Right. If they're that's what we discovered. And I, so that's a really big thing for people to understand, I think. Um, I use silicone. I use a lot of silicone because it doesn't want to relate. Do you have a brand name? Um, the one I used, I used to buy from, from the dollhouse store and they're gone. Uh, it was called um, Quick Grip. That's exactly what LaRonda uses. Quick grip. I think she, she does. does. Yeah. For sure. It's so you guys are experts at glue. And if, if, if we knew where that stuff was, you could probably look it up, I'm sure. I'm sure you can buy it on Amazon. Quick grip. Quick grip. Any good, any good silicone-based glue, I think, is all okay. I think. That's, I'm, I'm writing it. Fast and it's in the hardware store. Probably. Any in the hardware, hardware store. store. So well, that's good. I also like um, epoxy. For certain things, epoxy can be cool, and you can actually color it and do, do weird stuff with it, too. But very unforgiving. Once That's the, how I am. They're epoxied. They're done. <laughs> Would you like to share the slides? Oh, sure. Oh. Sure. This, this shows the, I guess, the cast of characters that went into that piece. And that's really how I see it half the time. Let's find the characters and then put them in. So that's the finished box, right? Correct. The, uh, that pink splash across the face was, it was almost an afterthought, but it was one that I liked and one that I'd like to try again, where that was just a piece of, I just started splattering paint at acetate until we got one that seemed to work. And that went in there uh, instead of a piece of glass or maybe behind the glass, I don't recall which, but it just added a whole other layer to it. And this was a fascinating piece for me to watch. I, I felt a lot of the spirit of Paula coming out. I'm not saying that that Barry's doing that necessarily, but just this free form, um, starting with a blank canvas, pardon the triteness, and then it's just fun. And it is bringing, from my perspective, the viewer into, wow, look at the Mona Lisa and all the detail of, oh, you know, these guys are painting and there's wine, so good on them, and Starbucks. And then if you look in the lower right-hand corner, there is a uh, outlet. I mean, it just, again, for me, watching Barry do this, and I, I mean, I could leave the room for a half an hour and I, I just come back with my jaw, oh, you know, oh, it's just, this is, and this, this is really one of my favorites too. Um, lower left-hand corner painting for dummies. <laughs> it's fun to me. That electrical outlet, I paid uh, the guys at Shapeways 3D $20 to make me electrical outlets and light switches oh. and hated them when they arrived. Hated them. This is a photograph. It's just a photograph of an electrical box on a piece of glossy paper. Wow. Oh. But it's small enough, and most of these, this is the case, most of these things are small enough that most people over 40 can't really see them anyway, so the detail doesn't have to be too perfect. And, and that's a big part of why distressed, I try, I spent a, you know, one box show trying to learn how to make things rusty, um, making the other things from paint, almost any recognizable logo, I found now I can get that Starbucks logo down to HO scale, it's like the head of a pin, but it's recognizable. And and seeing the the scale shift, I mean, I I would I would ask the viewer, looking looking at this, do you think that this is, you know what what size do you think this is? And inevitably, people are shocked when Barry juxtaposes it to a penny or or you know whatever. Um, and I see the detail really holding out. And I mean, 
before and after. It just. I guess I want people to be able to look at these things, sorry to interrupt, and, mm -hmm. and come up with some kind of story. A lot of these things don't relate to each other necessarily, but I think frequently that we will, our brains will make a story when we see some of these objects together. Definitely, your, your pieces have a story. And one of the other things I think that about materials that you do that's really great, I can't do it, but you put plexiglass in front or glass in front of the little tiny things that get dusty and stuff, whereas I don't, I just, but it's a great idea if, that, if you can pull it off, it really makes it great. There, there are definitely times where that was a result of uh, some of the county fair entries where the first time we put these things in and all the little bits and pieces just kept disappearing. <laughs> so, oh, we, oh, I can see why people. Oh, yeah, oh, it was that. hilarious. It was oh, hilarious. that's hilariously. At first I was royally pissed and then I said, it's very flattering. If you guys need to steal this little stuff, go for it. That's all. Um, I'd like to share your box from last year. Sure. Right. All right. Thank you, Shelley. Sure. Oh, wow. This piece was completely different, I think, from anything we had really tried. And here's another case where when I said that I tend to start with an object or some cast of characters, uh, that white trash can, mm. I, I think I made it eight or nine years ago. It's been sitting, moving around from one place to the next with paint peeling off it. And then I said, all right, let's use it. Let's show it. And it fit. So there were new things in here trying to, the, um, uh, just to make that arch and then to line it was a trick. It was a trick for me. So this was a lot of trial and error and a lot of um, white paint. I don't know what else to call it. It's beautiful. Uh, it's beautiful trash. There's, I mean I can, I have a story already in my mind. It really uh, resonates with, uh, with people, I think. What you I do. like it when you can look around corners. I like it when there are things you can't really quite make out without getting some effort. And the other thing La LaRonda does with her boxes as well, she'll have right. places where you can look through a window into another space. Right. Um, the other thing they have, oh, I'm sorry, Shelly, go ahead. Well, I just, I didn't notice until just now that that placard above the arch says GRO. Yes, it does. <laughs> and we appreciate that. <laughs> Those were my alphabet blocks. <laughs> <I'm ending. laughs> well, and I, I just wanted to give my two cents, and that is, once again, the viewer is welcome to to look at, at intimate uh points of reference. I mean, there, there is a whole nother dimension behind the can. And um, the other thing that I really respect about Barry's technique is that he doesn't push his philosophy or himself into his piece. My experience uh -huh. is that he creates the piece and he, he, he liberates it to the viewer, uh, especially with his, his exercises with trash. I mean, there's a lot of environmental, uh, you know, dialogue that can be said about trash. And my observation again is he, he puts it out there and he doesn't force a way of looking at it and it becomes art. That's my biased opinion, so. I love your observation, Susan. And I wanted to hear, you had talked before we started about uh, hope and, you know, will you tell everybody that? I, I was just sharing that I think that um, there's a great need right now in, in what we're seeing in society with, with great um, anger and art, I feel art heals, and that there's so much division and, and just so much fear that the artist is able to offer without words an something else to think about to to offer the viewer to come into another realm and and I, I think that we really need this the last year and a half has been really um life altering i i all i'm going to be is trite right now um and i really appreciate that about gallery route one that you all are so dedicated to create the space 
and art is presented, there is no force feeding of it. And you, you welcome in the audience to just take in the art and that and that's that's just really unique and I, I appreciate all that you all do. Uh, Thank you. I really appreciate your appreciation and understanding because it is a special place and um, I also wanted to just talk about if you don't have anything more to share Barry I, one more thing is you and LaRonda both do um, you photograph things and then you um, put them in your compute through your computer and make them tiny. Is there anything that people should know about that, or is that just uh, obvious? And do I just not know it? I am really kind of a luddite there. Really, but I'm very good at finding a workaround. So I usually don't know the right way to do things, but I can find the wrong way. Example, I. I've never had Photoshop. I wouldn't know what to do with it or how to touch it, but I can handle the Word document. And if I need visuals, that's all. It's Just not put them on. Me too. Good. If they need to be smaller. You make them smaller. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I that my 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 hello. Uh, my graphic design background is still working. My hands are really good. I'm still really good with that number one exacto knife. <laughs> my eyes aren't what they used to be. So now I find I need brighter lights, extra glasses, magnifiers. And uh, as these things get smaller, I laugh every time I say it, but it's the truth. I know with the HO stuff that I worked on for the county fair, I watch people over 40 breeze by it because it's too much work. We're asking them to work too damn hard to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really want to thank you for everything you've shared. And I, I wonder, should we, are there any people in the audience that have any questions for uh, Barry before we um, go on to Leslie Lake? It looks like Roger has a question. Dang it. Um, you just need to unmute Roger. Oh, so glad you're here, Roger and Helen. Hi there. Hi, Hi. Rikisha. Hey, Hi. those look like they're all 3D. How did you shrink them? I can see the 2D, but I don't understand the 3D. Right the shape. Where? Show me. Well, you've got the images you just showed me. Right. It's like you had like a small vacuum cleaner and small maps and mops and pails and tables. and. Oh, yeah. Well, when, when I take those images, um, I'll reduce them. If I have to construct some things, I will. Um, Go to the garbage can and get some <laughs> back there. I, Bring know, it I, back. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what these things are. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. And they're it's all like something, right? Yeah, they're strong. And, and that's all it has to be. So this didn't go into that watching paint dry, but maybe it'll go into watching welders work. I, I don't know. I, and the paint can. This actually, these I'm really proud of. Um, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. Oh, they're so cute. It's paper and a paper clip. Wait, show it again. Voila, I get it now. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's paper. It's a paper clip handle. Uh -huh. I rolled that, lay. I printed the labels. I rolled them around a, a fat magic marker. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. These aren't perfect, but they're, <laughs> they're good enough for a piece of rusty old crappy paint can. Absolutely. But I'm going to wear my glasses all the time when I go. <laughs> Bring an extra pair. I magnifying glass. I know. LaRonda actually has a magnifying glass that she puts in front of her piece for people to pick up and look at. <laughs> and and we've been doing it too. And I, and I want to say, let me say this, because um, All of this probably did start at the Thorn Rooms, if you know those rooms, and um, look them up. Thorn with an E. Okay, it's a miniature Anybody play, that's right? done any miniatures needs to look that up tonight. And also in, Vict in, uh, in is it Victoria, in um, Canada, there's a miniature museum that is amazing. Well. They, I love, they have a up, miniature look law, up. yeah. Anyway, I think we should move on now to uh, Leslie Lake and show her 
box from last year. Thank you so much for being here. Great. Great. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Yeah, yeah. So you have Leslie's box coming up, and uh, I am going to introduce artist Leslie Lake. She is the creator and leader of the Prison Art from the Heart, or PATH. A year after she re relocated to Marin County, California from Montclair, New Jersey in 2010, she was introduced to the Gallery Route One box show. She was jealous of her artist friend, Marilyn LaRusso, a lottery winner. So Leslie attended every box show, put her name in the lottery every year, but it wasn't until 2018 when her name finally came up and it was pulled and she created her first box in 2019. And she had so much fun, she says, and she's participated again last year. And now you're seeing what she did last year. And you see that she uses three-dimensional things as well as collage. And uh, she's always had a thing for music. So she's getting ready for this year. And I just wanted to say thank you for joining us, Leslie. Thank you so much. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Not yeah. yet. We're looking at your art, but we're- Oh, yes. okay, sure. Now we see you. She's right there. So here I... you are. And why don't you tell us about how you, I know you're excited, but how do you feel yeah. when you received this box this year? Um, well, it reminds me of all the work that went into it. And um, because I love um, all things of vintage nature and I love music and animals and teddy bears, I have a collection of teddy bears. And I had thought about this um, for a year and I, I love to do like a play on words. And there's a piece by Ravel called Pavan pour un enfant défunt, which is um, like a dirge for a dead uh, princess or a child, little girl. And I was thinking uh, to have something, uh, Pavan pour un, um, un sans peluche défunt, which is, in French means um, a dirge for a, um, a dead teddy bear, a little. <laughs> baby teddy bear. But I was thinking of pallbearers, but the word bear in pallbearers got me thinking. So I looked for uh, bear sculptures and I used those in the piece and I got an actual vintage from 1940, a little miniature teddy bear. And even though the piece, it, it was in a child's coffin, I did so much research into this particular piece. Um, I did research into coffin and coffin handles. And I know that, you know, to most people, it would seem a little morose, but it was meant to be more playful. And the very fact that the little teddy bear inside the coffin um, wasn't glued down. I mean, you could take him out, he could be resurrected. You know, he could play and he could go back in there and go to sleep. So um, that was what I had in mind. And I'm just really glad that somebody bought it <laughs> um, and this was you know during covid when there was a lot of morbidity so that's you know what i had made last year and uh what do you think will be helpful for other people to know about as they work on their box that uh... well um as far as the box goes um i know some people it's more they, they put the box aside and they think about it for a while and and it becomes more, um, um, you know, a process. I tend to think of things well in advance. I mean, I was thinking of things to do even before I ever became a lottery winner for the box show. And I'll think about it, um, you know, for a year in advance. And with the box, basically it could be used in so many different ways. Um, the box can be used as a diorama, as some people have done. It could be used as a podium to create things to build onto. It could be used to collage onto. When you think of a box, a box is something that contains things. So you could think, you know, what are things that uh, are containers? You know, you could have a swimming pool. You could have uh, a trough, like a horse water trough. You could have um, a planter. I mean 
it's, as I had said before, it's open-ended, no pun intended, with the box being <laughs> open. Um, what I love is that what I did last year, the first year that um, I had you know, attended the show and created a box, um, the box was more of a shadow box for art. But last year with the teddy bear um, and the pallbearers in the coffin, I deconstructed the box. But when you deconstruct a box, you have to use every single piece. But what I did is I had it cut and I used the extra pieces to create lids with piano hinges. And those are two lids just that as they would open up in an actual um, coffin, you know, that you would open and close. Um, but I mean, it, it's just so many things that people, do. I mean, it amazes me. It just absolutely amazes me what people can do and construct with their boxes. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I mean, know that you're, you use music a lot in your, yeah. so have you got any ideas? I mean, is there one way that you start with that, the music or are you using music this year? Do you think? Uh, no, this year I'm not. Okay. Uh, this year I'm very much into, I love anything vintage. Mm -hmm. um, so vintage or antique photographs, vintage art. Uh, this year I'm using vintage photographs as well as a photograph that I created. And I had to get in my car and drive all around Mill Valley looking for the just the right spot to take a photo that would go with the other uh, vintage and antique photos for this particular um, piece that I'm making. And what's really, really crazy and serendipitous is that after I had my own photo um, printed out by the Image Flow, the, I, I love going to the Image Flow. They really help me out. Oh, they're great, right? Oh, they're amazing. They, they do the best work. But a week after they printed out my photo, I saw a photo that looked almost exactly like it on the front page of the Wall Street Journal magazine. It's Imagine like, how what? much you would have gotten I mean, come paid. on, like, you know, we're on the same page here. What's going on? Um, but, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's just absolutely so much fun. And, and what I suggest for anybody, I mean, I tend to think of things well, well in advance, but that's not always, you know, necessary. It, it could just be something that become, you know, that you start with one little thing um, and you know, and it grows from there. Um, but what I suggest is to think about things that are of most interest to you, because that's a good place to start. Like, do you like animals? Do you like music? Do you like literature? Do you like miniatures? Do you like, um, you know, a sport? Or, I mean, like you could take any kind of theme and go from there. Um, any little item or object that, uh, tickles your fancy and you can create something from that. You can use collage, you can paint, you can do both. You can um, make little uh, objects, you know, like Vikisa, she always makes these amazing dioramas. I mean, I just love them. And she puts her dog, her dog, she loves her dog. And almost always you'll find some image or little clay sculpture <laughs> or something of her dog in her work, you know, because that's special to her. So. Um, the best thing, just have fun. Just have fun. Don't, don't go too crazy, you know? Don't worry about it. Just relax and, and enjoy the process. Oh, absolutely. Barry said something before we were meeting and I forgot, I forgot what it was, but it, was, it really was pertinent to how people uh, can think about their box. What was it, Barry? Do you remember? <laughs> anyway. Oh, oh, and then Susan, yo, go ahead. How am I going to remember that? Uh, I guess you're not. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was really good, though. And then Susan had made mention of, um, you know, how art is very healing. And I absolutely agree because with my uh, Marin County nonprofit, which is called PATH, it's an acronym for Prison Arts Touching Hearts. And I work with incarcerated artists from all over the country, the whole United States. And I give them a theme and they create artwork and they donate it and we get it mounted and framed and do exhibits. We haven't been able to do it since the lockdown, you know, last year, but um, they write back to me and tell me over and over and over again that art is very, very um, healing for them. 
you know, people who are in prison so that they can express themselves. Oh, yeah. So I agree, absolutely. Especially now, and I remember what it is. Uh, <laughs> Barry, you said try something new. Try something you haven't done before. And I found the Bach show has been so great for me. I'm not particularly a sculptor, although I studied it in art um, in, in uh, an art school at the Art Institute. But really, I know very often I just tried something. The box is a small thing and you can really try something new and enjoy mm -hmm. it and experiment, you know. So mm -hmm. that was the other thing that I, I remembered. And um, is there anything else that you would like to share with us, Leslie, that you think that um, we have I forgotten anything? I don't think so. You know, it'll probably come to me later and I'll go, right. oh, I wish I said this and this and that, but um, yeah. Do anybody have any questions out there? Yes, that's the next question. Is there anybody else that has a question or an answer? <laughs> Leslie, I was kind of curious, where are your resources for your vintage calling? What are your, what are your favorite oh. or is that a trade secret? Oh no, for um, vintage items, eBay. Oh. eBay, oh. oh my God, I'm an eBay queen. You could find almost anything on eBay, anything. That's true. Or, right? or YouTube, but eBay. And, I, and I've purchased um, beautiful antique and vintage uh, photos from people even from all over the world, you know, and I wait for them to, to come. And sometimes I need to photograph them myself or scan them to make them smaller and other times not. But um, yeah, I just, I just love anything vintage. It just calls to me from a completely different era. Um, it res I resonate with, uh, things from the early 1900s, yeah. Huh. Well, okay, resonate away. And yeah. wait, Barry has something. I do have something. Um, when you mentioned eBay, uh, the dioramas I made as a kid, eBay didn't exist. When I was in school, I graduated 1976, that tells you where I fit in. Um, I was making those dioramas with 12 inch action figures with Barbie and Ken and GI Joe mm -hmm. and all those 12 inch dolls. And I think it really took off when I realized I, I fell in love with this whole one to six scale world when I realized you can buy condoms for GI Joe. Oh, no way. <laughs> oh, yes. No way. Oh, yes. What? I have a box of Trojans. If no you way. Make them for him. Really? And Where? He has a vibrator. Oh. Google it. Google it. One of the oh parties I had put together as an assemblage before we were calling them <laughs> dioramas was all of those dolls, Barbie, Ken, G.I. Joe, Bionic Man, Bionic Woman, basically doing every nasty thing imaginable to each other in this uh, 48 inch by 24 by 24 inch thing. And our <laughs> whole lives exist in that scale. God. And I started buying them and realized that what I couldn't that they buy, wouldn't fit. I could fabricate. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, it all exists. And right. that was really probably the beginning for me. It wasn't so much about anything more than holy crap, all of this stuff exists. And my I'll stop in a second. My 92-year-old father would say the only thing crazier than the existence of all of those stupid things. Is it their idiots who buy them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I, I, I went there. I went there. But now we learn something, right? Hey. You came mm -hmm. here to learn and hey. you have learned mm -hmm. something. If it exists for us, it exists for them. <laughs> Anybody else have anything that they want to share? You know, if not, I'm going to read uh, LaRonda's piece. And I'm hopeful that Shelly, you could just show her work while we. Um, do it and then I'm going to talk a little bit about paper clay and then we're, we're then it's what it is so LaRonda has been a box show artist since 2003 but it wasn't until 2005 that she and her husband Steve um, started creating miniature dioramas this quickly evolved into creating those whimsical and highly detailed miniature boxes that you're looking at right now and that she's known for. She has produced 11 box show trailers for 
Gallery Route One's YouTube channel by using images of various box shows. And one is the animal video that I love so much and Rosebud stars in, but I digressed. <laughs> Rhonda was on the GRO board and she has been involved in the box show on a very deep level, having chosen to share her knowledge for several years as the unofficial box explainer known as the box show ambassador. She is a celebrated box artist having made one of the top bids ever. She could not be here today, but she, I really wanted to honor her and, and say that this is a piece that I love so much that we're looking at. And all of that, so many of the things in here are paper clay. She also went to the dollhouse and was very good at scavenging, but she made a lot of, of pieces and she covered, she made like bricks. She made every, a lot of things out of paper clay. She really knew how to use it. And I learned from her a little bit and I'm gonna share that with you. Is that the last slide we have? Yeah. Okay, great. Well then I'm, I'm gonna ask that you show me again and I'm gonna show you a box that I made, which you've probably seen before, but it's one that I happen to own. And I don't know if that, is that working? Yeah. Good. You can see I made a lot of the things in here, my dog, myself. Um, and I really learned to make little objects like the um, pies and, 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 and the little book and stuff from LaRonda. And I think that the environment can be really enhanced with paper clay. And I wanted to show you what I'm talking about. I just particularly like this brand, but to tell you the truth, I haven't done, I'm not an expert, but I have taught classes on it anyway. <laughs> this is the, this, you can get this at, at Riley Street and it's, it's just very amenable. The thing about paper clay is that you can work it and you can wet it and you can save it and you can paint it. So here's a, a little, here's a little rosebud. And that is how it comes out when it dries and it, you can slow dry it. You can put it in an oven and fast dry it. Um, depending, it's just an amazing, I, I just love paper clay. <laughs> I, I think it's the most fun. And I think it's the most flexible. I used to use Sculpey and all of those things that you had to bake in an oven and it's sort of stinky. And the thing about that, I mean, it's, I'm thinking of making a, for something else, a, a, a door handle and using the Sculpey, but for any, anything else, I actually fixed the frame with paper clay. I just, you know, all the plaster that came off, I just reproduced it with paper clay. It's just incredibly flexible. You can wet it, you can keep wetting it. I just, recommend it if there's something that you don't have and you can't get it on eBay and you can't find it in the garbage and you can't find it where, <laughs> I don't know where else, but anyway, to try and make the object, it's, it's really quite remarkable uh, stuff. So um, we were gonna open this to any questions or answers or sharing that people would like to do and I'm ready. Uh, so anybody have anything? Yeah, Barry wants to talk. Of course he does. <laughs> of course he does. <laughs> I do. Now I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, damn. <laughs> damn. That was entirely my fault. Yep. No, it was entirely your fault. Your fault. No. <laughs> It'll come back to me, though, in a second. Let's see if anybody else has, has anything yeah. and you'll think of it. That's how it works for me. Does anybody want to share a box that's in progress? Or does anybody have any questions about how, how to function within the box show. Uh, Alex. Hi, this is my first year being in the box show. I'm very excited. Um, I have a question and that is my piece is um, somewhat heavy. It's seven pounds and it's um, it stands on edge. So I'm just a little bit worried. I mean, I, I'm assuming you can use museum wax when you put it down or something, but I'm wondering who installs it, do we or do you? And how do we make sure we put it in a place where it won't fall? If it's, I mean, how do we, how does that happen? Jenny Lynn is going to tell you, I see she's yeah. ready. Yeah we, yeah, we install it. There's a group of people from the, the gallery that will install the show. Mm -hmm. And um, if you have any special instructions, um, please give them to us. Uh, they'll, the, if they do not have a hook on the back, um, we'll assume that they're going to go on a pedestal. And so we set up a lot of 
of tables and shelves where, um, where, where we put boxes out. A lot of them are pedestal pieces. And, um, and if you notice it is particularly delicate, then we'll, we'll have space behind it so, so it'll be safe. We really do want them to be safe. So, <laughs> and, and if it is, if you believe if you are, me, <laughs> if you're concerned that it, um, it might move, we could definitely put, um, put museum putty on the bottom. Okay, great. Yeah, mine is glass. So, um, that's oh, wow. how do I Whoa. do it? Exciting. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Well, thanks for now. Barry, go, Barry. I remember now everybody in this show, and it didn't come up yet, and it should because. I think everybody in this show has a uh, unique ability to look at some kind of ordinary household object and say, oh, I know what to do with that. And just the whole idea of repurposing the things that are lying around the house um, mm -hmm. to, to the, the best example I have at hand would be that um, a Cheerio <laughs> is just a Cheerio, but it's a really good donut. Oh, wow. Amazing. We have to tell Steve Pring, the donut man, about that. <laughs> so being able to look at these things with new eyes, I think, becomes... Um, That's so cool. <laughs> okay, I'm done now. Thank you. That was great. We, we love your enthusiasm. And I wanted to say that have some fun. I mean... You're donating your time, you're donating your box, you know, enjoy the ride. And um, if you enjoy it, I think it'll put that into the piece and, and we'll sell it for a lot of money and make a lot of money and be very happy. And um, is, if anybody else has anything to share, any helpful hints, Shelly? Well, I, I just want to add some other ideas into the mix because we've been focusing a lot of attention on diorama and miniatures, and um, there's a lot of possibilities, of course. And one of the things that I've really enjoyed seeing um, people do with their boxes is when they actually alter the box in some way, maybe cut holes into mm -hmm. it, um, maybe they add legs to it, um, you know, things like that. So that can be really fun. And um, one of my favorite boxes last year had these um, tiny little portraits that were drawn onto eggshells and then um, placed into the box. And um, that was really cool. I love it when people incorporate bits of nature mm -hmm. and um, and things like that. And then like Jenny Lynn's box last year, um, she had all these pieces of, um, as my dad would call it, awful. Um, the the discard, uh, awful. discarded bits of wood from like a construction job or something and um, putting it together to create a beautiful altar. And Shelly, yeah. you use the box as a canvas. Have, have done that so that and right. Wendy has done that so painters you know that's another way to approach right yeah I really enjoy painting on the the face and sides of the box um and um one year I I did my um painting so that the box was hung with the point at the top um and um but yeah, it's it's really fun to create a dimensional painting that's not just the surface, but that you have the, the sides to deal with as well. Uh, I've seen poetry written on the outside of the box. Um, lots of different things. Yeah. So, um, Ms. Eni, how's how are we doing for time? We're we're good. We have a little more time. If and and if anybody has anything they'd like to share. Uh, why don't you raise your hand? And if not, I just wanted to say I'm at Gallery Route 1 a lot <laughs> on Monday the 14th, Sunday the 13th, Monday the 21st, and Friday the 29th. If anybody wants to further converse or share anything, we're open and the members show is on. And I think it's really worthy of a, a visit. And I always love to see you guys. <laughs> anybody else? I think we're good. What do you think, Jenny Lynn? Are you ready to, to close us out? Or 
Did I see a hand? Uh, yeah. Alex and Leo. Oh. Yeah, I just, I wrote my question in the chat as well. Will there be an opening reception this year? Yeah. Um, what I think we're going to do is, we're still working that out. Um, we're going to, for the whole opening weekend, we're going to schedule times when people can come in um, because we are limited as to how many people we can have in the gallery. Mm -hmm. um, but we want it to be a festive weekend. So we're, we're planning on doing that for scheduling times and then having uh, an event that's, partially live and partially pre-recorded that will disseminate on um, the internet. So we'll we'll walk around and, and introduce every box with the, the name of the box and the artist, and then um, just give a tour of the show live on that day. But we're really excited that this year, people are gonna actually be able to see the show. Last year, we our hours were so limited and now we'll, we'll be open um, pretty much every day, well, five days a week anyway. <laughs> Um, so that's what we're planning on doing. Yeah, and I just want to add the one of the main reasons that we're going to um, have people come staggered uh, by appointment is because we want to avoid a large crowd gathering outside the gallery as people are waiting to go in. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're hopeful that this will, will uh, mitigate that. Leo, did you want to say something? Um, yes, uh, this is my second box. It's still in the raw. Um, I still haven't seen too many examples except for one box that uses watercolor painting, I believe, as the gal who did the trailers. So you always seem to have a trailer theme in there. Mm -hmm. and, but I haven't seen many others. So I'm still thinking along a watercolor uh, diorama type thing. Leo, I see a box behind you. Is that? Well, that's from the. That's the first one. Okay, so oh, you have it. You, you, you bought. You bought your box. Pardon? Are you the one that that did you buy? Yeah, I box? ended up overbidding my nephew. Oh, oh. <laughs> this is. I didn't know my nephew was bidding on it too. So that's funny. You might well, you get this share is an incredible it. Incredible box. I What's loved that? your box. Can, can, do you well, mind showing? Can you? Show it to us, mister. What was so fun about Leo's box is that you could ha see it from two different views. I remember it too. It really was fun. Let's see. Can we, can, him, can we? Oh yeah, I love that. That oh, was great. Right. Yes. Remember? Yeah. If he talks, he'll get big. Look at that. That's crazy. So whimsical, yeah. It's the uh, masks on the, uh, which, what is up? Yeah, that was great. <laughs> really great right in the pandemic. I know why really you wanted it. Yeah. I was bidding on that one too. <laughs> <laughs> That's a compliment. Thank the you. box show queen was bidding on your box. I can uh, share, you know I can share one of my boxes. <laughs> you can also. Oh, yeah. Do you have it? Yeah, you, can, also you can go on. Yeah, I was going to. That's a great idea. You can also go online and to the gallery route one dot org and see all last year's boxes and the years before and look at oh, the great. look at the videos. Yeah. LaRonda's videos on the gallery route one YouTube are so fun. They're little, short, sweet, charming videos. And you can see a bunch of stuff there. And here right. is Shelly. Oh, Shelly. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then it has. <laughs> Oh wow! Oh. Is, is that acrylic? A beetle. Yeah. Can you pin yourself? I mean, and what else? Oh. Oh, and that's then beautiful. A dragonfly. Oh, that's beautiful. Gorgeous. Bravo. Dragonfly. Oh. Yeah. What did I call it? Um, dreaming of a better world. <laughs> and then the pandemic started, right? That was well. I, I don't want to offend any um, Trumpers, but it was my response. <laughs> Yay. That's a sweet response. That wasn't, <laughs> that was the nicest thing he probably ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, can I think that uh, we can get Jenny Lynn to just give us the details and sign off now. Would, are we okay with that? Unless you have another box, Shelly, you got another, you got anything else? Okay. All right, go Jenny Lynn, and thank you all for coming. Really, you made my day.
Really <laughs> appreciate it. And I hope we helped you a little bit at least. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for coming. And I just love what I think. I actually really love these events just because it's so fun to see how different people approach these this project. And um, it's just really inspiring and, and fun. So thank you all. Um, so I just wanted to remind you that the drop-off dates are in July, July 11th, 12th, and 13th. On the 11th, it's a Sunday from 5 to 7. And the 12th and 13th, Monday and Tuesday from 11 till 2. And I just also wanted to say that this year, we're going to have the auction on our website. And um, we're going to be able to start setting up everyone's page before um, before the consignment of the boxes. And so if you wanna send some photos in progress, we can, we're gonna release, these will be live essentially. So we can put um, people's websites, um, photos in progress, just as sort of um, a lead into the box show. So people might start to follow, follow the progress of the boxes and specific artists. So, and we also wanted to give you all the opportunity to do um, a little, self promo so people can look up other work that you do. We don't like people do that on the boxes, but in, in this way, we're really happy to um, to offer that just because it'll put your work in a, in a broader context. It just makes it more interesting for everyone. So we're really pleased to be able to do that this year. So um, thank you everyone for showing up. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me. Um, and that's it for tonight. Thank well, you. What one more thing, uh, just tell your friends, tell your ma, tell your pa in Arkansas, tell everybody. And um, the, the Pacific Sun is having a ballot and then we'd love for you to tell people to vote for the gallery and, and support us. And uh, thanks again, I forgot to tell you that. <laughs> Thank you yeah. for having us. See you. Oh, yeah. Bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>